Why do you think it is important that this generation is interested in space exploration? An interest in space means you're always going to be learning, always discovering fascinating information that gives you, you know, a different perspective of our home planet and the universe as a whole. At least for me, there's never been a better time to show an interest in space. The industry is busier than ever, there's more launches than ever, there's more missions than ever. And so space is very much, it's growing in prominence. And with, you know, interest, it's going to come knowledge of why space is so important for us. To use some examples, research on the space station is saving lives on Earth. You know, the DART mission from last year has helped us to learn how we're going to defend ourselves potentially against future asteroids. And the, I guess the most sort of obvious one potentially is, you know, Earth observation satellites helping us observe our planet's climates and how sort of climate change and global warming has changed over time. And if this sort of new generation coming through are interested, they're going to want to get involved, you know, move into the industry, um, promote further innovation, which I think is extremely important. And say even if there'll be many people out there that would just disagree on the importance of space exploration, I'd say to them, even if you look at this from an economic perspective, you know, the industry supports like thousands of jobs, boosts the economy, promotes innovation once again. And after all, if we're looking at this from a US perspective, NASA only represents, you know, 0.5% of their total federal budget. So it's only a very small portion of an economy. That is why I think it's so important for this generation to be interested in space exploration. And what do you think can be done to fascinate more young people for space exploration? And how do you use social media, especially Twitter, to do this? Obviously, there's numerous things that really, I think, have to be done to fascinate more young people. There needs to be more integration into the curriculum at schools, you know, within science lessons. And there needs to be more of a variety to try and engage more young people. I think as well as that, I'd like to see more influential figures engaging young people in space you know you look at the likes of Elon Musk whether you like him or not he's very much getting space in the news right now and then of course social media apparently right now most space news I'd say does come through Twitter which is brilliant already I think but to really engage that sort of those younger people I think science communicators must branch out further to TikTok for example and this is something like I quite like to do at some point I think many others should and hopefully that will bring in more young people And then also seeing, you know, mainstream news channels show more of an interest and dedicating more of their resources to covering space flight. And then so on sort of how I then use social media to do this, and I'll talk a little bit about how my own interest was sparked. So I always had an interest to an extent, you know, when you look up to the skies at night, but up until about 2020, that was about as far as it went. And funnily enough, this interest sort of exploded, you know, sparked through Twitter. And so I know sort of the power that Twitter and social media can have to, you know, get more young people into space. And it was something as simple as just seeing a link to this SpaceX webcast, um, a normal Starlink launch in 2020, and just seeing sort of terms in this webcast, you know, Max Q. And I think many sort of young people need to sort of watch these webcasts and hopefully they'll sort of get drawn in like me. And it led to me watching, you know, the Demo 2 mission, the first crewed space flight from the US in nine years, and being able sort of in the days after to be able to look up to the ISS because you can always see this is a dot moving around the sky some nights and that that was just pretty special for me and I found that pretty inspiring and hopefully many can sort of experience the same. This all kind of spurred me to creating a number of Twitter accounts which I continue to run now. My first account was sort of made in sort of mid 2020 which covers everything to do with SpaceX and I really wanted to see an account that covered you know all the SpaceX news that being valuable for users and sort of an easy go-to point for the latest information. Of course, like many things, you know, it starts out small. As soon as grown larger, you know, the likes of Elon Musk, you know, replying to certain things, giving out certain information, reply to, you know, some tweets. And, you know, we've now grown to like 50,000 followers. And it kind of shows there really is this growing sort of spaceflight community. And, you know, here the over aim is just to inspire and engage really and i think the key for engaging young people and what i try to do is by really simplifying these tweets you know there's so many complicated words in space flight as you can imagine you know after all it is rocket science and so making sort of space news and sort of pictures easily understandable is very important at least for me to try and bring in a new audience and inspire this new generation and that is what i really try to do so for example you know finding pictures from like old NASA archives that are actually easy accessible but many don't really get access to and people can see these and sort of hopefully choose to delve a bit deeper and spark their interests and really what I want to see is you know people experience what I did in 2020 and hopefully that's what happens for many people in the future. Why are you personally so excited about this age of space exploration? For me there's several reasons yeah I could go on about this for you know so long you know you look at the last several years and you know it's hard not to be excited really because 
you know, space flight activities, you know, have undoubtedly ramped up. You know, this has happened globally, but also especially looking in the US as well. If you look at sort of the new super heavy lift rockets that have come to the scene, you know, we've gone from 50 years ago having the Saturn V to now having, you know, NASA's space launch system that's recently launched, uh, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship rockets. You know, people are going to be seeing these webcasts for the first time and hopefully it really brings them into the world of space. I've heard of many space enthusiasts who I've heard of now and they very much trace their passion back to, you know, Falcon Heavy's maiden flight that happened five years ago. And then I think also why this age is incredibly exciting is that with, you know, SLS, Starship, we're going to be returning to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. And this is part of NASA's Artemis program. It'll be the Artemis II mission next year. And basically they'll orbit the moon on the Orion spacecraft. And then going beyond the moon, you know, we can look at future Mars missions. Initially, there were these aspirational goals of a 2024 human landing, and that was always going to be over-optimistic, but a potential human landing, maybe in the late 2030s, early 2040s, is possible. Even just the fact we are now able to talk about humans landing on Mars in this sort of age of space exploration shows how exciting it really is. And then from that, you know, we've got future space stations and of course sort of the reusability of rockets now. What we're now starting to see, we saw the first sort of booster landing with SpaceX in 2015. And I think what is so exciting is that people can simply look at our webcast now and seeing booster landing, a booster that has come from space and coming back to land on Earth. It's hard not to look at that and think it's pretty not really cool, you know? And of course, we're now moving on to fully reusable rockets with Starship. And what SpaceX have done with reusability is that now other companies, other private companies are now looking to build their own reusable rockets. And what's so important with this, you know, it's reducing cost, it's going to increase launch cadence, and it's very much crucial to a multi-planetary future and cheaper access to space, whether it's for satellites or humans. And of course, you know, I could go on for days about how much is going on right now in this new age of space exploration. And this is why like I and you know many others are so excited. The progress over the next several years is going to be fascinating. And I'd very much encourage everyone watching, you know, to follow along because it's set to be one hell of a ride.